Got everyone? Come on. Come on down. All right, we got a big cast of characters here. Well, it's wonderful to be here in Osceola County. I want to thank uh, the folks we have with us today, Mayor Blackwell. We have C City Manager Bill Sturgeon. We also have Representative Fred Hawkins. I have Dr. Kenneth Shepke, who's the Chief Medical Officer for the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Um, and then we have folks um, who are going to tell their stories about receiving early treatment for COVID. Paula and David Roman, Dennis Sharp, um, and Chrissy uh, Mal uh, Malakul. Malukowitz. I had it in the car, too. I was reviewing it. <laughs> um, well, we th thank you guys for here. So uh, over the last many weeks, uh, we've been able in the state of Florida through over 20 state-supported sites uh, provided early treatment in the form of monoclonal antibodies to nearly 65,000 uh, Floridians. Uh, during that time, we have seen admissions to hospitals decline. We've seen the hospital census decline. We've seen visits to the emergency department for COVID uh, decline. And so we're happy that this is something that uh, people have really uh, had success with. Um, and that's what it's all about, early treatment, saving lives, keeping people out of hospitals, uh, making sure they can have as quick a recovery as possible. Now, if you uh, are looking, obviously, since the beginning of the year, this has been something that's been available under an emergency use by the, by the Food and Drug Administration, both the Regeneron, which we use here, as well as the Eli Lilly, which is now actually uh, going to be approved again uh, for, for more wider use. Uh, these are things that have been in the repertoire. Uh, they've been used in Florida. A lot of hospitals have used them. Uh, but unlike the vaccines, which are available at every pharmacy and which obviously 100 percent of adults know about, uh, there were not a lot of people that, that knew about this. Um, and then people that did weren't sure where to get it. And so as we saw that deficiency over the summer, uh, we did our best to raise awareness of this, to say, hey, if you're infected by COVID, this is something that could potentially help you resolve uh, the illness short of hospitalization. Uh, but we also wanted to provide easier access to folks. And so the sites that we have done, uh, we, of course, in the central Florida area um, here, we're happy uh, to have a, a site um, right here at St. Cloud Community Center. So kind of a soft opening now. If someone shows up uh, this afternoon, I'm sure they'll treat them. Uh, but starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. here at St. Cloud Community Center, this is going to be a monoclonal antibody treatment site, just like we have at Camping World Stadium, just like we have in, in Polk County, in Merritt Island, Volusia County, Sumter, all those areas in this part of the state uh, that we have. We'll have one right here. It'll be open nine to five, seven days a week, and it will be able to see uh, over 300 patients every day. Now, most of our sites do probably around 150 to 200 based on demand. But we do have several around the state that consistently do 250 to 300, even over 300 sometimes. If there's more demand at a particular site, then obviously we can move more resources there. Some of the sites do 100 or even 50 a day, and so we can obviously collapse that, make that a little smaller, and try to be nimble with it. Uh, so we think this will be very helpful for folks here in Osceola County. Now, they've obviously had access to go to Orlando or Merritt Island or Polk or wherever, uh, but this is right here in the community, so it does make it easier for people, and we're trying to make it as accessible as possible for folks uh, throughout this. Um, we'll hear from some folks um, who've had it, but I can just tell you the key on this is the early, early intervention. Uh, and for a long time, a lot of patients or a lot of people that would get infected uh, were basically expected to just stay home and hope it didn't get worse. And uh, we're here to just say in Florida, you know, we're not just going to hope, we want to act. And so here is a situation where, particularly for people that are at high risk of COVID complications, you have an early treatment option uh, that has proven to be successful, uh, not just in Florida, but, uh, but throughout the United States. So uh, we're glad that this is here. The, not only has the recognition increased a lot over these last weeks uh, here in Florida, but now even in other states. And other states are following Florida's lead with some of these sites. You have more demand for it. We get correspondence into my office all the time from other states saying, hey, thanks, I saw, saw your press coverage online, and then, I, and then I got infected a week later, and then I asked my doctor or whatever. So we're also there's more physicians that are now avail, uh, aware of this. 
uh, not all physicians or even many physicians were not aware uh, of the monoclonal antibodies. And so we're doing a lot to raise awareness and to help a lot of people. Um, and again, this will be open nine to five, seven days a week right here. If you want to look at all the areas where these sites are in Florida, you can go to floridahealthcovid19.gov. And if you want to make an appointment, just like we, we had this when we had the vaccine sites, you can go to patientportalfl.com and make an appointment. Now, this um, site uh, should be available for doing it. If it's not available right now, it will be by tonight. Um, they just have to populate it and make sure that it's working. Uh, this is something that is particularly beneficial for folks who are considered higher risk for severe COVID. So, of course, you're talking about elderly individuals. You're also talking about folks who are overweight. So anyone with a body mass index over 25 is somebody that's authorized. Also, people that have kidney problems, diabetes, cardiovascular issue, issues, lung conditions. And so I would say, particularly when you start talking about people that are like 50 and above, you know, most of the people that are 50 and above are going to qualify um, in a lot of these things. We also have it authorized because Regeneron's been authorized for prophylaxis use. So you could have a situation where you know, someone may get infected in a household. Maybe there's a vulnerable household member. They haven't developed symptoms yet. They can actually come in and get this as a prophylactics and hopefully ward off the infection entirely. So that is also something uh, that we're able to do. So early is the key. If you do it early, the results have been very good. This is not something for patients that are, say, hospitalized in intensive care. By that point, uh, the antibody, uh, one, it's not even approved at that stage of treatment, but uh, it's not something that's likely to turn the tide. If you do it early, you really can fight this back and have good success. So we're really happy about that. We're also happy to see that it is keeping people out of the hospital. I mean, we would have had thousands more that would have been admitted over these many weeks um, if it wasn't for uh, this program. So we're going to hear from some folks who were able uh, to get this, and they're going to talk about it. So we have Paula and David. Uh, they have a home here in St. Cloud, also um, down in Miami. And so they're going to come up and talk about uh, their story. So yeah, go ahead. Yep. Good afternoon. My name is Paula Roman, and I want to say thank you because it was extremely helpful to be able to drive over to Orlando and get the treatment. Um, I believe uh, my first symptoms was on a Thursday, and I remember getting in the car after picking up our oldest daughter from camp and thinking, if I close my eyes, I feel like I can fall asleep. Um, so I said a quick prayer and said, all right, Paola, here we go. You got an hour drive. And I got home. I said to my husband, I feel like I got to throw myself on the bed and sleep. So that was my first day of symptoms, and I had a week like that where it was extremely difficult to even just get up and shower, brush my teeth. I had to force myself to drink orange juice and have blueberries for dinner. I felt like from the bedroom to just going to get a water refill, my legs were like spaghetti, and it really just was a lot of headache, a lot of uh, tiredness and body ache. Um, and I believe, I'm pretty certain that I got it from my, my dear father. Um, when I kissed him on a Sunday afternoon as he was leaving, um, we later found out that he also was positive. And um, in South Florida, he did not have the luxury of going to a center like we did here. He had to actually go to urgent care several times and then he was able to uh, get the treatment at an emergency room. Um, he's doing great, 70 years old. After the treatment, he's doing great. Um, but it was very hard, uh, so I was thankful to be able to go that Sunday. Um, if you're a mom and you hear your, your, your daughter when you're in quarantine say, Mom, can we cuddle? You know, that's another moment of uh, difficulty besides everything else that you're feeling. So I want to thank my husband for taking care of me. <laughs> and our daughters while I was going through all of this. And I think that's a great segue, right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dave Roman. And Governor, I just want to say thank you so much. And I'm sure your staff team who researched this and, and made this available. Uh, when my wife came home sick, I think uh, like many husbands, uh, you, you get into a sense of uh, either fear or <laughs> faith. And I knew that there were options and resources. so I just powered up uh, my internet connection and, and started to read as much as I could on what could be done. Um, and 
the way social media works, I didn't even know anything about uh, monoclonal antibodies, but all of a sudden on my social media feed came up an, uh, an advertisement uh, from the state saying that in Jacksonville they just opened up this, this treatment and um, it made me curious and I started researching and I saw that there was one within driving distance from our home here in St. Cloud. And uh, I spoke with our local doctor and I said, hey, is this legit? I mean, is this some sort of internet scam on my phone that just popped up? And uh, my doctor said, no, it's for real. And if you can get to it, I recommend doing it. Um, my wife got sick uh, a week before I did. And I think our biggest concern was we didn't both want to be sick at the same time with two little girls in the house. The worst thing about this was uh, self-quarantining in our home. My wife was in a front bedroom and I was taking care of our daughters, which was fantastic. Um, our daughters knew that my, my wife had COVID. Uh, we've been very upfront about not to fear this thing, but to let them know this is what's happening. Um, my wife was in the front room coughing and, and sneezing and, and I just couldn't wait for our appointment to come along. Um, I found out about this treatment, made the appointment on a Tuesday and it was on a, that following Sunday that uh, we were gonna have our appointment. And by that time I still was tested negative. Uh, three times I tested negative. Uh, every Thursday I'd go and just, just to see how I was doing. And I remember my daughter uh, came in one morning on a Monday with a, a fever. And I was, like any father, concerned and scared. Uh, immediately called our pediatrician, did a teleconference, and she said, just keep her fever down. Kids are resilient, they'll bounce back. Um, the next morning, a Tuesday, my second daughter, who is uh, five years old, showed up, 100.4 fever. I did the exact same thing that my pediatrician says to do for my first daughter, who is seven. And uh, I told my wife, it's not a matter of uh, if, but a matter of when, because they have both jumped in my bed when we were asleep, and, and I've hugged them, I've kissed them, and, I, and I've prayed over them. And sure enough, by that Thursday, I woke up with uh, the weirdest of dreams and immediately made an appointment for myself. And that Sunday, uh, I got the, uh, the Regeneron treatment, and uh, literally by Tuesday, I was back up and I felt like myself again. Um, but Sunday was the worst, I'll be honest. Uh, waves of nausea and all kinds of just odd temperatures, spikes. Um, and again, there is real fear. And I think our, our culture, our society has done this disservice where instead of giving us information, they give us this fear. And, and I thought that uh, every little heartbeat that's buttered from anxiety and not from COVID was COVID. Uh, was able to get this treatment and uh, again I, I just feel like once it worked on me I told my father-in-law about it and I said find a place if you have to drive up here to Orlando and stay with us we'll find a way to get you an appointment um, he couldn't make the drive he was in an emergency room and they administered the uh, Regeneron treatment to him and uh, sure enough about four days later he was back up to his normal joking self and bringing us uh, pan pizza and it was great. So I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. And just so um, uh, the, the point about the father and father-in-law, obviously this has been offered in Florida. There are health systems that offer it. You know, our sites are meant to be very convenient. We want people to use them. But there are other ones. Now, we do have a site in Miami-Dade at Tropicana Park. We also have one in Broward County at C.B. Smith. And then we have one in West Palm Beach as well. So South Florida, all three of those South Florida counties have a state site. But I know a lot of their uh, other health care apparatus has also been doing this, which is, which is really good. And we're happy about that. Okay. Uh, we have Dennis Sharp. Uh, he lives here in, in Osceola County, um, has a suppressed immune system. And after he tested positive early this month, he started to develop symptoms. And so he uh, asked uh, a physician, his physician, about the monoclonals and uh, was able to, uh, uh, to get signed up for that, um, and also uh, eventually his mother uh, as well. So why don't you come in and 